2015, I was able to spend some time with a pre-refreshed Ford EcoSport. It came with a 1.5 liter engine and a notoriously iffy transmission. And let's just say that its performance left a little to be desired. Now we're here with the refreshed version of the EcoSport and it now comes with a 1-liter EcoBoost engine and a conventional 6-speed automatic, at least the top-of-the-line variant does. And it's more powerful and it's gotten rid of its biggest flaw. But is it any better? Let's take a spin and find out. Now I think the two main questions a lot of you guys are gonna ask is, does the Ford EcoSport still feel underpowered and does it still come with that laggy transmission? And I'm actually happy to report that the answer to both of those is no. The one liter EcoBoost produces 125 horsepower and around 170 Nm of torque. And that proved more than sufficient whether I was out on the highway or inside city limits. While it's not gonna cancel out the worst potholes and bumps, it actually does a pretty good job of mitigating the daily grind of city driving. There really isn't much you can complain about here. So we were able to cover about 400 kilometers during our time with this test unit and we averaged about 9.8 kilometers per liter but keep in mind that that was mixed highway and city driving and we actually had our minds set on seeing what this engine was capable of. I'm also very impressed about the major overhaul inside the cabin. There's a new dash layout, a much simpler one where all the buttons are easily available to the driver. And there's a dark vibe in here that I'm sure a lot of people are going to like. It's a cleaner overall look and I'm absolutely happy with what Ford's done here. If you opt for the Ford EcoSports Titanium variant, the one with the 1.0-liter EcoBoost, you're gonna get all the bells and whistles. That means you're gonna get automatic headlights, automatic climate control, a sunroof, and this great Ford Sync 3 infotainment system. Now, this touchscreen is one of the most seamless I've used in a subcompact crossover. That's not something you can say about every touchscreen infotainment system in the segment. Overall, I think the refreshed EcoSport is now one of the best available cars in the subcompact crossover segment. And this is thanks to its new turbo engine and feature-rich equipment list. I guess the real question here is, will you guys as consumers find its more than 1.1 million peso price tag justifiable? And I'm going to share some thoughts on that. If you are on the hunt for specifically just a subcompact crossover with good highway performance, good city driving performance, that's if you're looking for a subcompact crossover, if you have the budget and if you're really looking for a ton of features, that's when you buy this EcoSport. This has been Dre Laurel for Top Gear Philippines and I'm signing out. Thanks for watching.